For those of you that are familiar with the channel, you know that during this past year, I climbed from the lowest rank on Face It all the way to 2400 ELO level 10. But because all I played last year was Face It, I've only ever played a few games of Premier. So this meant once the Army Pass came out and I decided to start playing Premier, I was very low ELO. This resulted in countless lopsided games where I would drop 30 or more kills, but the reason why I'm making this video is because during my climb, I played a lot with my lower ELO friends and also a lot of solo queue, so I got to watch firsthand how players in these ranks play. Because of this, I was inspired to create 5 categories of improvement where I list things in order of their importance to work on as a newer player or as someone who's having a hard time climbing at the lower ranks of Premier. These categories include winning more gunfights, game sense, playstyle, mental, and utility. But before we get started with the video, we need to talk about today's sponsor. Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a fully automated CS2 trading site. Skins Monkey provides an instant way to get new skins. Along with that, they have a 24-7 live chat support, so if you run into any problems, they'll be right there to help you. If you're interested in finding a specific skin, you can use their search tool. Better yet, if you're not sure what skin you're looking for, you can use their filter tool to find exactly what you're looking for. If you use my promo code RIDERDIE, you can earn up to $5 for free. Trade up $100 to make the most of it. Now, if you don't want to trade your skins, but you'd rather buy, Skins Monkey is now offering a 30% deposit bonus. And if you use my promo code RIDERDIE, you'll receive an additional 5%. Remember, use code Ride or Die to get up to five dollars for free and claim your thirty-five percent deposit bonus. Thank you, Skins Monkey, for sponsoring this video. In my opinion, the most impactful thing you can do, which will result in you winning more of your premier games, is starting to win more gunfights. There are countless things that play into this. Most obviously, crosshair placement and counter strafing, which are at the top of my list in this category. But that's all I'm going to say about those two. There is an ocean of content on YouTube about how to improve these skills, and I don't want to bore you with information you've already heard before. On the off chance that you aren't familiar with these concepts, I've linked a video below where I talk about these two things in detail. Outside of that, the one thing I noticed most players were doing wrong was how they managed their weapon recoil, more specifically the first 5-10 to 10 bullets. I was completely blown away with how many times I saw someone miss out on a free kill because when their first shot didn't land, they were essentially hoping the next 29 would. I saw about 90% of players I watched do this, and if this is you, I strongly suggest you take a look at this workshop map and start practicing at least your first 10 bullets on the AK and both M4s. This concept leads me into my next one, and that is knowing when to spray or tap. Just because your weapon is automatic doesn't mean you need to be spraying it every single time you see someone. The weapons in Counter-Strike become more inaccurate as you shoot them, so depending on the distance and your ability to control recoil, this will determine whether you should be spraying or tapping. There is no perfect zone where you should do either. This is all player dependent. The last concept I want to talk about is raw aiming, which is something I've mentioned before in other videos. This is an essential skill in Counter-Strike, but one thing I noticed that a lot of players in lower elo actually don't have bad aim. So my advice to anyone who only practices their aim in aim labs or other third party aim trainers is to maybe take a break on those or reduce the amount of time you're spending on it and start to focus on your mechanics in game. The next category is game sense. There's nothing I can tell you now that will instantly increase your game sense, but something I can do is introduce you to a number of concepts that you can look out for as you play or watch Counter-Strike. Doing that will hopefully give you a new perspective on how the game works and better develop your game sense. The first concept is knowing where enemies are likely at. While you're playing on T-side, you should have a vague understanding of how the enemy team will most likely set up for the round during their default. But if you're completely lost in how CT should be setting up, there's endless content on YouTube describing this. If you are certain how the CT should set up at the start of the round, you'll be completely lost if you're not at least familiar with how players normally react and how they rotate when T start putting pressure on different parts of the map. Again, there's no way for me to properly show you this concept in detail unless I were to go through every possible scenario. But if I did, this video would be weeks long. But a good comparison to this would be chess. For every action, there will always be a reaction. And the best players already know the most awful move to make before their opponent makes it. Similarly, if you watch high elo VODs, you'll see these players instantly react to information being discovered across the map. This concept will also largely dictate most of your positioning, but there are also countless other things that go along with positioning. Again, positioning is something I've already talked about in detail before, so if you want to check that video out, link will be in the description. However, another concept I do want to talk about is playing around a planted bomb. Similar to the recoil control concept, around 90% of players I watch fail to properly play around a planted bomb. As a CT, they never saved regardless of the situation, and as a T, they were never aware of the bomb's location and the time remaining until detonation. As a general rule of thumb to start playing post planes better is this. If you're a CT, know that the T's do not have to peek you until you tap the bomb. And as a T, you do not have to peek until the bomb is tapped. Also, take note of where the bomb is planted and be sure to play in a position that will allow you to peek the bomb when you need to. If this concept is something you struggle with, then I firmly believe if you get better at this, your win rate will likely increase 5-10%. to 10%. The last three concepts related to the game sense I want to quickly go through because I want to get to other more important things that I think will significantly increase your win rate. First being, look at your minimap. 
Make sure it's large enough so you can see it clearly and it's zoomed out enough so you're never confused with what's happening on the other side of the map. Second, be unpredictable. Make it as hard as possible for the enemy to get a solid read on you. Something that a lot of people forget about is there's a death cam. Once you kill someone, they're gonna mention where you were headed once they see you on their death cam. Use this to your advantage to spread misinformation on the enemy team. And third, if you're unfamiliar with how good economy works, then please do some research on economy strategy. But a basic outline for this would be, if you and your team can buy, then buy. If you and your team can't afford a full buy, don't buy. But if you and your team can't full buy after you save, then you're on what's called a double loss, where you should instead force, then save, then buy. I know a lot of that can sound really confusing if you're unfamiliar with economy, but I promise you, a little bit of research and a little bit of practice goes a very long way. The next category is play style. This is really important not only so you can learn the game more, but so you can also become more familiar with where it is that you thrive as a player. If you don't already know, figure out what you like doing the most as a CT. Do you enjoy playing rotating positions, anchoring a site, or something in between? And also discover what kind of player you are. Do you like using the op? Are you better with the rifle? Do you like being the first one out on site? Or do you like trading your teammates out and playing post plant? It's really important to be good at all these things, but it's also really important to know where you feel the most comfortable as a player so you can put yourself in optimal situations in must-win circumstances. For T-side playstyle, things are a little bit different, but what I highly recommend for all players is to find a rhythm on every map, something that you're consistently doing in order to find advantages. This could be something as simple as Lurk smoking B on Ancient and seeing if you can catch CTs off guard, or it could be like smoking Street on Anubis and peeking B main. Whatever it is, it's important to find success and repetition. Doing something like this over the course of dozens of games will help you figure out what works and what doesn't work. Also learning how to adapt to what CTs throw at you will eventually make you a much better player. The next category is utility. And I'm not just talking about lineups, which don't get me wrong is essential if you want to climb, but I'm talking specifically about how to pop flash for yourself, knowing when to throw HEs, and being able to throw lurk smokes and also learning how to play around them and also understanding what protocol utility is. First, pop flashes. Learning how to throw effective flashes for yourself will make so many situations so much easier. And an added bonus to this is, if you're indeed playing at lower elos, 99% of the time, people do not look away when they see a flash, especially if it's a really good flash. There are a lot of great resources on YouTube to start learning how to throw effective pop flashes, but the number one thing that works for me is simply running, right-clicking the flash while looking up, and swinging with it. If done right, it's impossible to look away from. Next is lurk smokes. Throwing smokes where their sole intention is to deny vision from the enemy is good, but if that's the only way you're using smokes, then you're missing out on an infinite number of free kills in your matches. Regardless of the map, I throw lurk smokes for myself every game. A good lurk smoke will do one of two things. Either A, force the enemy to hold multiple angles, or B, deny enough information you find an opening to capitalize on. And a really good lurk smoke will do both. A good example of this is on Anubis. On T side, I throw this smoke that lands in front of B main. At a glance, this may appear to be counterintuitive to my intentions on T side, but if we really take a look at my options here, I can do quite a bit. Based on the information I have, I can walk out on either side of the smoke. This is because normally there will be two players on B, one holding main and the other playing from E box. Unless E box gets forfeited, I'll be able to safely walk through whatever side I know the B main player is not on. If in this scenario, I don't know where either B players are at, I can simply find myself on this side of E-Main without giving any information to the CTs about my location. From here, it's incredibly easy to pick off rotates from E-Box or simply anyone who isn't expecting you to be there. I highly recommend that you start implementing Lurk Smokes into your gameplay. Even if you throw it, you don't always have to just play around it. Just throwing it and playing from another side of the map puts a lot of pressure on the defense and will sometimes slow down rotates. Third is understanding how protocol utility works. On some maps, there are spots where you have to throw certain utility. An example of this is playing the A anchor on Mirage. If you aren't mollying ramp every round, then you're leaving a giant opening for you and your team. And on the same map with a different side, not throwing mid window or at least top mid smoke for your team drastically reduces the amount of pressure the CT players feel mid not having to deal with you. Every map has its own pieces of protocol utility, and if you spend more time watching high low demos, it become obvious what utility you should and shouldn't be throwing. Last for utility is throwing effective HEs. As a general rule of thumb, I throw HEs only in two situations. One, I'll throw a lineup for an HE at the start of the round where I know the enemy team will likely be. An example of this is A on Anubis. You can throw this HE at the start of the round that will destroy anyone who's coming down T stairs or holding E box for a peek. On the flip side of this, if CTs are always throwing this HE, you can throw one back with this lineup. The other time I'll throw my HE is when I know where the enemy is at, and there's a good chance that the HE will either kill them or result in a lot of damage taken. What you should absolutely avoid doing is throwing HEs away with no information and not with a lineup associated with a timing. This is the most common trend I saw when I was starting my premier climb. The last category is mental. This in my opinion is something that applies to all skill levels and is something that I'm constantly battling. First and foremost, try at all costs to avoid tilt. 
There really isn't anything more detrimental to your ELO than spamming games while being tilted. There really is no other way to combat this other than recognizing it and taking a break. Outside of tilt, there's confidence. This is something that from what I discovered has a remarkable impact on my performance, especially when I'm playing on face it. When I know I'm playing against a pro stack or against a bunch of high elo puggers, there's always this thought in the back of my mind that I'm gonna get absolutely destroyed. And honestly, a lot of time in those situations I do. But there have also been times where I don't even bother checking the face lobby before joining and ultimately end up winning just to realize my team only had a 39% chance of winning. Those are my five categories for climbing Premier. If you want to share your thoughts on how you climb the ladder, or if you want to see a certain video in the future, then please do so in the comment section. I do in fact read every comment and I appreciate everything you guys tell me. Also, I want to apologize for the cold I have right now. I don't know if that was super obvious while I was recording the video, but it's been something I've been dealing with for the past couple of days, so hopefully it doesn't affect the quality of the video too much. But that's all I got. Before I officially end the video, I want to quickly mention all the names that are scrolling by. Those are all the generous Ride or Die YouTube members that I've joined over the past couple months. Every member that joins gets me one step closer to making YouTube my full-time job, so thank you. Also, if you're looking for a Discord community, then you should check out the Ride or Die Hub. We do giveaways several times a month, host 10 mans, and have text channels entirely dedicated to finding like-minded players to queue with. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with my content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. Thanks for watching.